Good morning. I am Dennis Schmidt, the pastor of Dubuque Community Church. The title of today's message is Paradise, a place of harmony, bliss, and peace. We have had many messages recently that tell us how, with God's help, we can get through the troubling times we have currently and the rough times that will be ahead. We have shared that message because that is what God's holy word tells us. It tells us that we are in a place where there will be trouble and trials. Uh, God wants us to know that we are not in heaven yet. Also, we are not in hell yet. Some people say this is heaven. It's not. Some people say this is hell. It's not. Those are both coming in the future, depending on whether you put your faith in Jesus Christ. However, there is some, some challenges of those kind of words in the Bible, but all the Bible is not gloom and doom. There is a lot of wonderful information on the delightful days that are ahead for those who choose to surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ now. We look at some of those future rewards today. The story all starts out, and this is the picture that's on the screen, with God creating all life. He created the birds and the fish and, the sea and, and the, all the land animals. The air was perfectly pure. All the water was perfectly pure. There were no tornadoes. There were no hurricanes. Everything was created to live in complete and perfect harmony. There was no death or killing, not even among the animals. It was such a wonderful place that many times today we refer to it as paradise. Almighty God created it all in six days. On that last day of creation, when God saw that it was all ready for its caretaker, God made man his crowning creation and gave him authority over all of the earth. But something that was even more wonderful than all the water and the plants, if you get into plants or if you're into animals on all the animals and all the people, was that in the garden, God was walking with mankind. The Bible tells us that God himself would walk through the garden in the cool of the evening. God looks over all that he has created, and this was his assessment, and this is not on the screen. Genesis 1.31, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. When our wonderful, loving God says something is good, it must be flawless, without defect. And when you look at this picture, at the picture that was on the screen, and see the abundance and the beauty, it makes you want to be there. That desire is put into your hearts by Almighty God, because once we accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that place will be our very real future. In that place of perfect harmony, God gave man only one rule that he needed to follow. And Genesis chapter 2 tells us about that event. It says, the Lord God took the man, after he had created all, all this beauty, and put him in the Garden of Eden. That is what God calls what we call paradise often. He called it the Garden of Eden. To work it. There was a reason he was there. To work it and take care of it. By the way, he worked it, but it wasn't the kind of hard work we have to do now to, uh, because of the curse, we have to work so hard. It was more like just enjoying the beautiful flowers. And he was put there uh, to take care of it. And the Lord commanded the man, and here's the one command, you are free to eat 
from, from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And here, that's the command. And then he gives them a warning. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Well, we don't even know if man understood completely, although he was probably way more intelligent than any of us were because he had been perfectly created by God. We don't know if he totally understood what death even meant. But for a while, they've stayed away from the tree out of their love for their God who created them. But at some point, they eventually did go and eat from the tree of the, uh, of the uh, knowledge of good and evil. And death came into the world for the first time. The man and the woman. And here's the big thing. And all creation came under the curse of sin because they had disobeyed Almighty God. The perfect harmony that was enjoyed by the whole earth was destroyed. By the way, when we think about harmony, don't we so often say to ourselves, if only we could all get along? There seems to be so much disharmony in the world. But when we get there where God is in control, there will be harmony. Adam and Eve did not die immediately. But when they sinned, they began to die. God had originally created them to live forever. But because of their rebellion against God, the man and, the wife and his wife were driven out of the beautiful garden. What a sad day that must have been for Adam and Eve. But thank God that is not the end of the story. Right after man's sin, God promised Adam and Eve and all their descendants that someday he would send a redeemer, a messiah, a savior to rescue fallen man and restore, and this is important, restore what man had foolishly lost. God told the devil in Genesis 3.15, not on the screen, the devil who was called the great serpent in Genesis 3.15, And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and ours. And if you heard the message a few weeks ago, you know that there's been a battle between good and evil ever since. And then there's going to be enmity, which means no truce or no quarter. There's never going to be someone who's going to give up, but it's going to go on to the end. And then it said, he, the Messiah, that Savior, that Redeemer that I talked about, will crush your head. And again, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about that when you want to make sure a snake is dead, you crush its head. But he, and you will strike his heel. Uh, the devil was behind the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so he was trying to kill Jesus, but because Jesus was the Son of God, he rose from the tomb on the third day just the way he said he would. And the wonderful news is that when he was on that cross, he was paying for all of our sins. Later, God is going to reaffirm his, prophet, or his promise through the great prophet Isaiah. And one of the wonderful things about God's promises is he always follows through. They always come to pass. So, in Isaiah 11, 6 through 9, it tells us this. And God, again, is trying to show us this picture of restoration of harmony. The wolf will lie down with the lamb. I mean, it just seems incredible. Uh, wolves are known to kill lambs just for the fun of it. They will go into a, a, a group of sheep and kill maybe 20, 30 in a night just for the fun of it. Uh, but not so, not when the end comes and when we get back to paradise. The leopard will lie down with the goat. Oh, that leopard, that goat would be in a lot of trouble if it wasn't in the end times. 
the calf and the lion and the yearling together. And by the way, that means like a, a, a mama lion and her little cub and a little calf will all just be laying down together in perfect harmony. And a little child will lead them. A little young child will just lead them around. And then it says, and the cow will feed with the bear uh, because the cow and the bear will both be eating grass. Their young will lie down together. Again, just in perfect peace. Uh, the, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. That sounds incredible, but that's the way it's going to be. There will be no more death or no more killing on all the earth. And it goes on to keep reinforcing this picture. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra. So a little baby will be playing there right next to the hole of a cobra. And the young, and, and, uh, and the young, uh, and the young child will put his hand right into the viper's nest. Well, this is two of the most deadly snakes no, known to mankind, but because of the peace and harmony that will be restored, there will be no harm done. And it says this, they will neither harm, in the verse 9, they will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, right in the, where the presence of the Lord is, for the earth, and I look forward to this day, will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There are so many people today who do not know the Lord and their lives are so messed up and they could have so much more, but they don't know the Lord. But as in, them, in those days, all those people that get to paradise, every one of them will know the Lord and they will live in perfect harmony. And, and the knowledge of the Lord will be as deep as the waters cover the sea. Oh, that's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember, God told Adam and Eve he was going to send a Messiah to restore what was lost. God always does what he says. In a little town of Bethlehem, a little baby was born. He grew up, and, and we celebrate that birth at Christmas time. He traveled around the country telling people about God's great love for them. He taught and preached and healed many, many for three and a half years. Then, because of the jealousy of men, that he had to endure a fake trial and was sentenced to death on a cruel Roman cross. The Word of God tells us he did not go to that cross for any of his own crimes, but to pay the penalty for the payments of our sins. He had to pay for the sins of the world. Jesus, and that was a message we had a few weeks ago, went to the cross for us to take our place. The Apostle Paul, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 15, wrote this, and it's not on the screen, but we're going to have a picture of the Lord on the cross to remind us what Jesus did for us. In 1 Corinthians 15, 21 through 22, it says this, For since death came through a man, when Adam sinned in the garden, death came into the world and it came down upon all of us. Then it says, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. Verse 22, not on the screen. For is in Adam that all die. So in Christ, through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Messiah, the Savior, the Rescuer, all will be made alive, made to live, not just a wonderful life here, but eternally in a paradise that we had the picture of. Hallelujah, what a, way, what a day to look forward to. And then 2 Corinthians 5.21, also not on the screen, we'll keep up the picture of Jesus there. God made him who had no sin, and that picture of Jesus on the cross, Jesus put all of our sin upon him, 
and made him pay the punishment for all of our sins so that in him, through Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. Well, hallelujah. That's all I want to shout, hallelujah. After Jesus died on that cross, he rose on the third day just as he predicted he would long before he had his trial. He returned to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting, the Bible says, for his enemies to be made his footstool. We started today with the book of Genesis, and we're going to finish up with the book, which is the first book of the Bible, and we're going to finish up with the last book of the Bible. We covered the whole book, and we had Isaiah, which is actually pretty much in the center of the Bible, and now we're going to go to Revelation, which again, if you've heard any of the messages, you know is called the End Times Book. And it describes what it's going to be like for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, which leads to eternal life, and also what it will be like, what the end will be, for those who refuse to accept and, re and they have rejected the free gift of eternal life purchased by Jesus Christ. In that future date, those who have accepted Jesus Christ will be returned to that garden with all of its joy and beauty and harmony and all that appeared to be lost for such a long time will have been restored just the way God has promised. However, there is one important fact that we all need to be aware of. Not everyone will be able to enjoy the privilege of living in the Garden of Eden, in that place we call paradise. The Word of God continues in Revelation 22. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. He is going to give out to those people, and I will give, and that's what it says here, to everyone according to what he has done. So you are going to receive based on what you have done. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he will look at you and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, and he will invite you into his kingdom. If you have rejected Jesus while you're on this earth, he will look at you and say, Depart from me, I never knew you. You do not want that. And then it goes on to say, Blessed are those who wash their robes. And by the way, the Word of God tells us that we, our garments are spotted by this world, but Jesus Christ, when he paid his penalty on the cross, he washed our robes white as snow and they have the right to the tree of life that's that eternal life and may go through the gates into the city remember when adam and eve got kicked out of the garden uh, they they got kicked out well that gate is going to be opened again and the way through is the gate of jesus christ his death for us on the cross we will be going back into the place of paradise. But then he goes on a little further. It's on the screen. But outside, not, not in the side, not in paradise, but those who are on the outside are those who practice magic arts. The, these people who get involved in the occult. But when you look at the Greek word, it is a Greek word called pharmakos. And it literally is where we get the word pharmacy. And what he's talking about is those who are involved in drugs. Now, people, when they get involved in the occult, will sometimes also use drugs, many times will use drugs, in their practice of the occult. But it also doesn't mean just those, but those who are abusing drugs. People who, whose God are drugs will not be in that city. Nor the sexually immoral. And God has a very high standard 
for morality is one man, one woman for a lifetime. Nor murderers, it says. And by the way, Jesus said, if you hate your brother, you are already guilty of murder. The idolaters, that means falling in love with the things of this world and not in love with God. And everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Uh, there are all these lies going on in the world and we have the holy word of God, which is truth. If you want to follow the lies of this world, then you are do any of these other things here that you will. And by the way, it says practices these. It doesn't say that if you ever were involved in them that you cannot uh, enter the kingdom of God. It means if you continue to hang on to them instead of receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Now we're going to tell a little more about what awaits those who are in the city. We just talked about those who were outside the city. And again on the screen it tells us this. Revelation 21, 1 through 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This whole earth is so messed up and so polluted by sin and the water's polluted, the air's polluted, uh, everything is in such bad shape that God is literally going to re take the old one away and recruit, re recreate a new one. You know, he did it once. It won't be that for hard for him to do it all over again. He's going to re recreate it without all the evil results that were caused by sin. All the beauty and peace and harmony of the original earth will be restored. And then he goes on to say, if the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and there's no longer any more city or any more sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. Do you remember before when we said God used to walk with them in the garden? Well, here it is. God is going to come down from heaven. I mean, right now we know God's in heaven. We're down here. God is coming back from heaven. He's going to live again with men. We said that was the most special part of the garden is that God was going to be there. He's going to be there again. Coming down out of heaven from God. And it says, prepared as a bride dressed for her husband. I have the privilege of performing many marriages. And I tell you, when that bride steps through the doorway in the back of church and everybody looks at that bride, everybody just says, wow. The bride, that bride is dressed to the nines. She's going to be as radiant, as beautiful as you're ever going to see that lady ever in your life. And that's the way we're going to look because we've put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, prepared as a bride beautifully adorned for her husband. Just like that. And then it says, I heard a loud voice from the throne. This is God speaking with joy, with excitement. He, he, he's saying with a loud voice. And you know why I believe God is speaking with a loud voice? I believe with all my heart. He misses, missed the, the intimate fellowship with us more than we missed being with him. If you've ever seen little children and their parents and them get separated for a short time, uh, the child will be somewhat happy when they get restored to their parents, but those parents will be so ecstatic and they'll hug those kids and kiss them and, because they, the adults, or the, the ones, the more responsible ones, the ones who know more, uh, understand the joy of the fellowship more than even the foolish children in that case might do so. And, and, and he says, and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself uh, will be with them. And here's what I love about verse 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There's a lot of tears in this whole world. There will be no more death or mourning or crying. Why do we do a lot of tears? Uh, why is there a lot of tears? We cry 
at the loss of our loved ones. We mourn for them. There will be no more death. There will be no more funerals. There will be no more mourning or crying or pain, <laughs> it says there. Uh, and, uh, you know, as I get older and uh, the body is wearing out a little more, pain is something you have to deal with. There won't be any of that. We're going to get new bodies when we get there in the heaven. And then the last verse says, For the old order of things has passed away. The way things are now, aging, getting old, uh, all the things that come with old age, all of that will have gone. And it says, for the old order has passed away. Then verse 5, that's not on the screen, says, He who is seated on the throne says, I am making everything new. Then he wrote, said, write these down. He told John to write these down, for these words are trustworthy and true. God is making a solemn promise that these events will occur you can take it to the bank is something that we used to say. So we, here we are on the screen back. This is the future for the people who are in Christ. And it's not the pagan image of little, little babies floating on the clouds playing harps. That image doesn't appeal to almost anyone. That is a pagan image. That is not the word of God. The devil is delighted if you believe that kind of falsehood. I believe he even helped create it so that most people would not be excited about getting to heaven. He, the devil would want you to think, well, maybe it's not that great of place. And the opposite is true, that it's a wonderful place. It is imperative that you know the Bible, God's word, and know that it can be trusted. Because it will re make you realize there is a divine creator who has a wonderful future for you. And if you believe that divine creator, you know that you are accountable to him. And you know if you try to live a perfect life, you're never going to make it. Those sins we talked about before, they come into our lives. And then you begin to re realize you need a savior. And the word of God tells you who that savior is. His name is Jesus, and he will give you the joy, the peace, and the harmony that you can only have in Jesus Christ. You know, we said earlier, we all desire that kind of harmony, and God can give you that. God bless you. Let, open up your life to Christ today, and join a good church, and let the Lord bless you in your new life in Jesus. Amen.